good day students here we are to discuss a very very important chapter a very important concept that is constitutional governments in this chapter we'll endeavor to understand and know the meaning of constitution and to know the meaning of constitutionalism we will also try to understand the features the principles of a constitutional government and the unfortunate causes which become hindrances in the way of a constitutional government and we will understand this concept better by uh, studying some constitutional governments in asia uh, latin america and africa the developing countries the developing continents now what is a constitution it is a legal document it is sacrosanct it is holy it is very important it provides a legal framework to the government of the country irrespective of which party comes to power it ensures stability it ensures continuity it is the voice of the people it is a guiding light to the government of the day whenever the government sits down to frame policies or to make laws it imposes constraints and restraints on the government of the day but the restraints and constraints are positive they are reasonable they can be exclaimed explained to the people uh, to the government it keeps a check on the government it keeps a check on the policy makers it is a holy book of the political system of any political system a constitution can be written as in the case of india and it can be unwritten as we have read in other countries uk they say some political thinkers say have an unwritten constitution whatever the constitution is a holy document which runs the political system it ensures political stability and it controls the arbitrary actions of the government in power it is a document which has the stamp of the legitimacy given to it by the people india's preamble starts with we the people of india having solemnly resolved to constitute india into a sovereign socialist secular democratic republic we the people we are gifting it to ourselves we have gifted the constitution to ourselves it is the voice of the people so the constitution is a is a guideline to the government that they have to perform or they have to take decisions or they have to go into the process of decision making with a certain goal in mind or with certain goals in mind the uh, government of the day acts according to the constitution and this this adhering to the constitution and its various facets is constitutionalism in practice in this process it promotes equality among the people and there's a feeling of share and care among the people among the majority and minority among people belonging to different caste class religion region language and the government it encourages the ideas of liberty equality justice and it promotes the dignity self respect of the individual and it is it is done in a spirit of goodwill and cooperation but the accountability of the government is always there accountability to the people responsiveness to the needs of the people so the constitution endeavors to restrict the government in some parameters so that the government works according to the will of the people according to the mandate of the people the greek philosopher aristotle encouraged the idea of constitutionalism the romans were very encouraging and very adaptive towards the idea of constitutionalism they wanted the spirit of constitutionalism to be applied in full force christianity at a certain time went against papal authority 
They did not want the authority of the church. They wanted universalism, equality, coupled with the spirit of fraternity. In Europe, for many centuries, the king and the church exploited the masses. The kings believed in the divine right of kings, that they have blood, blue blood flowing in their veins, and they believed that nobody could criticize them. Now, to control the minds of the people, they wanted the help of the church. So the king would, would promise power, wealth, status to the church on the condition that on Sundays or in mass, whenever the people would go to the church, the uh, authorities of the church had to praise the king and tell the people not to criticize him and to accept him as the representative of God on earth. This continued for many years because the adjustment and accommodation between the king and the church benefited both of them. Now, with the coming of the Renaissance and the Reformation movements, there was a change. The common person uh, became aware, the common populace became aware, alert, education, spread of education, technology, the printing press, uh, publishing of books, uh, when a few people got educated and they would uh, read out the events or a book, uh, books like A Tale of Two Cities and all, something which told about their rights to a public. One person would be educated in the village and he would sit down with a book and he would have a hearing audience where people would listen to him every evening and wait for the next evening. So th these kind of groups helped in making the people aware about their rights and they wanted more political participation. They wanted that the government, um, it might be the king, it might be the government in any form, it should be accountable to them, it should be sensitive to their needs. So a new era started which the king and the church tried, tried to suppress. But once the things had been set in motion, there was no turning back. And this movement became stronger and stronger. And today we have the idea of constitutional, which is much accepted, much liked, and is established in many countries. Now coming to Asia, we have the case of India, where uh, constitutionalism is a big success. Uh, uh, if we look around and, and look at our neighbors, it might be Bangladesh, Pakistan, China, Burma, Nepal, Sri Lanka. Uh, we will come across uh, stories where for many years the constitution and the spirit of constitutionalism, constitutionalism was put on the back burner or where the constitution was there but it was not followed. India can boast of a very, very good record of adhering and running the country according to the constitution. We are a liberal a democracy and we've been successful because we have given the individual dignity, self-respect. We believe in uh, giving liberty, equality, justice to each and every citizen of the country. It, be, it might be from the majority community or from the minority community. So India has adhered to all the uh, principles of the constitution, all the dictates given to it by the constitution and uh, has applied the idea of constitutionalism uh, in practice. What we can say about India, except the very small part but very horrible part about the emergency which continued from 25th June 1975 to 21st March 1977, uh, except that part, India can boast of uh, adhering to the constitution. But this cannot be said about our neighbor Pakistan, uh, in which we, uh, we cannot see the civilian government uh, playing its role as it should be. The military combined with the bureaucracy has always called the shots. We've had generals like uh, General Ayub Khan, uh, Yahya Khan, uh, General Zia, uh, General Parvez Musharraf very recently who uh, hijacked the whole 
process of democracy. Uh, they were the ones who dictated, who took all the advantage of the political instability and ruled with their own uh, ruled with their own uh, whims and fancies. Uh, elections have been held in Pakistan, of course, after a lot of pressure from America. Uh, but uh, these uh, dictators have violated all constitutional norms. Elections are held, but uh, they are a farce, and it and they jokingly say in Pakistan that yes, free and fair elections are held in Pakistan, but at the time of counting, the hand of Allah. Uh, uh, is there and we don't know what happens. So a very blatant violation of constitutional norms. We have the example of Nepal, uh, our uh, immediate neighbor, a uh, very friendly country with us. We have um, no visa problems. Our citizens and their citizens can just cross over the Indian boundary. But when it comes to the political system, uh, Nepal does not boast of having such a neutral, impartial and a stain-free uh, political system. Uh, uh, King uh, Birendra uh, surrendered all the powers to the parliament in 1990 uh, and uh, Nepal became a constitutional monarchy. But uh, this process was vitiated uh, in uh, this century. In 2001, King Birendra was uh, mercilessly killed, uh, assassinated along with his own family by his own son, who was in a drunken state as reported by the media. Uh, only King Gayendra, younger brother of King Birendra, was not there in that room. He and his family survived the massacre. Uh, uh, King Gayendra took over the power in 2001 and he relegated the constitutional norms uh, and showed an exit to the uh, idea of democracy. Uh, he ruled with an iron hand till 2005 when he started repressing, uh, when he dissolved the parliament and started ruling by his own dictate. The people did not take very kindly to it and they came out on the streets. Uh, he repressed them, suppressed them violently, but the people were not to be cowed down. Ultimately, in April 2006, after three days of uh, mass protests in which people just sat on the roads, all the parties came together to form the seven-party alliance. Even the Maoists joined them. The King Gayendra had to give all the powers to the parliament, uh, to, uh, to uh, the prime minister, uh, to Girja Prasad Koirala, who became the prime minister and led the uh, parties to power. So that was the sad end of King Gayendra, uh, a befitting reply by the people to King Gayendra, who violated all constitutional norms, uh, norms and uh, tried to wreck the constitutionalism and its spirit. Uh, the other states, countries around India also have had a, uh, have had a very sorry past. We have the example of Sri Lanka, where the Sinhala Buddhists tried to, who are in majority, who were in majority, tried to uh, suppress the Tamilians um, uh, by uh, by making the Sinhalese an official language and making Buddhism the official language. The Tamilians organized themselves into many small bodies and retaliated violently. One of them was the LTTE, Liberation of Tamil Tigers Elam, headed by Prabhakaran. Um, they, it led to a civil war between the government and the LTTE for many, many decades. Thankfully, the election, election process and the constitution and the spirit of constitutionalism is back in practice in Sri Lanka. China defies any any uh, definition of constitutionalism it is the everything happens according to the constitution but everything is handled by the uh, communist party of china uh, which rules uh, by its own definition by its own rules and regulations myanmar or burma uh, ruled by a set of generals who um, have kept the freedom of press away from its boundaries who do not believe, who did not believe in giving any uh, stamp of approval to any political party and keeping the main opposition leader, Aung Suu Kyi, in house arrest for many years, separating her from her husband and her son, who were based in England. So uh, th this is the sorry state of affairs. This has been the sorry state of affairs in Asia 
the largest continent for a long time. Uh, now, the, uh, the causes of uh, constitutionalism not uh, having a firm footing in Asia are, are many. There are many reasons for it. First of all, uh, we've all had a colonial past uh, which has left its, its strain, uh, its pressures on us that we are not able to blossom as we would like to. The legacy, legacy of the colonial past is deep. It is deeply uh, ingrained in us and they have left us with some lacunas which we are not able to overcome. Uh, poverty. Poverty is one, uh, one uh, big uh, stigma in the, whole con in the whole continent because uh, when there is poverty, uh, there is, uh, the, the people don't take political participation very seriously. They sell their vote. Uh, they are not aware or they do not have the time to be aware about what is happening in the political system. They don't play any role, a very active role in the uh, political participation. And the most important thing is all these countries have got their, achieved their independence only in the last few decades. So the uh, democratic institutions are not firmly entrenched in the political system um, uh, of the countries. The democratic institutions still need a lot of time and a very healthy environment to work and then only we can see the effects. And constitutionalism is an unfamiliar concept in our countries where uh, we have been divided for a very, very long time on petty issues like religion, caste, region, so on and so forth. There are many obstacles in the way of constitutionalism. Dynasty politics. There are about 28, 29 families which are running the whole of uh, India, for example. You have the Abdullahs in Kashmir, the Badals in Punjab, um, the Gandhi family in, um, in Delhi. Uh, you have the Sindhyas, you have the pilots. There are just a few families which are running the whole show, uh, which leads to a lot of hoarding of wealth, corruption, and these are the banes of the, uh, of the, of, in the way of constitutionalism. Um, we have selfish leaders. Uh, the leaders who got us our independence uh, were a different class altogether. They fought for independence. Uh, they were the people uh, who uh, lived for politics. The present breed of politicians are living off politics. They are just there to mint money. It has become their vacation. Uh, the frustration among the people and the, because of the unequal distribution of wealth, which is being taken care by the recent demonetization, um, are, are problems uh, which do not let the spirit of constitutionalism permeate into the into every aspect of the political system. So uh, these problems, uh, if met or if, uh, if a solution is found to such problems, uh, then the people will probably have more time, more faith to uh, think about constitu constitutionalism and see to it that it is practiced uh, without any hindrance. So all these dictators who violated the spirit of constitutionalism who paid no heed to the rule of law and who ruled by the force, manipulation, violence, repression, ruled for a long time. And how could they rule for or be in power for such a long time? It was by force and coercion. We have the example of President Mabsaugo of Equatorial Guinea who ruled for, who stayed in power for 36 years and 279 days. We have the example of Santos, President Santos in Angola, who stayed in power for 36 years. We have the example of Pre President Zikov in Bulgaria, who ruled for 35 years and 258 days. How, how could you stay in power, brushing aside the constitution and the spirit of constitutionalism for such a long time? It is only when you, when you suppress the voice of the people which is suppressing constitutionalism. And if 36 years or 35 years was not enough, we have the example of King Kim Tu-sung of Korea who ruled for 45 years. Uh, 
We have the example of Omar Bongo in Congo who ruled for 41 years and 155 days. We have the example of Nasinge Erdema in Togo who ruled for 37 years and 297 days. And then these leaders glorify themselves. Constitutionalism is further tainted when these leaders give themselves names to glorify themselves and make them immortal and create a fear psychosis in the minds of the people. So we have Kim the second of South Korea who calls himself the great leader. We have Kim Jong of South Korea who called himself dear leader. We have Gaddafi who called himself brotherly leader and guide of the revolution. And Turkmenistan, President Niyazov called himself Turkmen Bashi. The crux was that they were the ones to guide and only they were the ones who could lead the citizens to a bright future, leave aside the constitution, leave aside the spirit of constitutionalism. So journal Sani Abacha in Nigeria proved to be a dictator. President Assad in Syria was a totalitarian ruler who ran an authoritarian regime. President Nukruzinza of Burundi buried the constitutional norms deep from where they could never be retrieved. We can say or we can summarize by saying that constitutional governments are still a mirage in the developing countries. We need the concept of pure democracy not only in the constitution but in practice on the soil of, of the country, on the land of the country. And for this, we need selfless leaders. We need leaders who will rise above their vested interests. And we need an end to dynasty rule. So we can conclude this lecture by having it in mind that we will have to put in sustained efforts to continue to usher in constitutional norms. The journey is tough. The journey is long, but we have to usher in the spirit of constitutionalism. Separation of powers is, is essential and so is checks and balances as given by Montesquieu. We have to adhere to the spirit of constitutionalism and to understand the sanctity of a constitutional government and the need for constitutionalism in each and every country so that the individual can lead a life of dignity, self-respect, full of freedom, equality and justice. Thank you.